Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to add more languages to your Flask app, meaning there are translated versions of all the text that you have in your app so it can support multiple languages. So as an example here, I have my app, which is in English at the moment, but if I go to my browser settings and change to Spanish and then refresh the page, we see all the text in here changes to Spanish and even like the date formats and the currency formats changes to a format that is more typical in Spanish speaking countries. So so that's what I want to show you in this video. Uh, you'll see it's pretty easy to get started with it. But before I get into the video, I just want to say that if you need help with anything in here beyond what the video uh, explains or you get stuck on something or you just need help with your Flask app or Python app or whatever in general, I do have a coaching program where I work with people one on one. So if you're interested in learning more about that, just go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching or click the link in the description below and um, we can set up a time that we can meet on Zoom and we can talk about whatever problem that you're having. So with that said, let's get into creating this example of adding translations to your app with Flask Babel. Okay, so to start, let me show you what I have already. I've already built the main part of the app, which does the work of saving the information that I put into this form. So let me just fill in some values here. Let's say September 20th, three nights, a suite, and $1,000. We'll hit submit, and we see it appears here at the bottom. So it's a pretty straightforward app. Let me go over to the code to show you what I have. Uh, in Dunder init, it's the basic stuff. I'm using a database and I'm using a blueprint. So in extensions, I am instantiating SQL Alchemy. In models.py, I have a reservation model. So it just has the fields that you saw in the app. For the routes.py, I have one route. Uh, basically what it does is if it's a post, it will just take the form information and create a database record out of it. And if it's a Git, it will query the database for all the existing reservations and send them over to the template. And inside the template, I just have all the information for filling out the form. And then at the bottom, I have a loop that will uh, list out all the existing reservations in the database. So that's what I'm starting with. So the next thing to do is to actually translate this app to use more than one language. So in this example, I'm going to use Spanish, but of course this can be any language that you can come up with. So the first thing I want to do is I want to install Flask Babel. So pip install Flask Babel and it's installed now. So I'll go over to my extensions.py and what I'll do is I will say uh, from Flask Babel import uh, the Babel class. And I'll go ahead and initialize it here. So Babel equals Babel. And for Flask Babel, uh, one of the main ideas is it will detect the language that the user is using. So to do that, you have to define uh, something called a locale selector that will actually be used to select the language. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define that function here. I'm going to call it get locale. And the idea behind this function is it's going to uh, grab the best match language uh, for the user. So to do that, I can use the request object from Flask. So I can do request.accept underscore languages dot best underscore match. And then inside of best match, I can supply a list of the languages that my app will support. So in my case, I wanna support English and Spanish. So EN is for English and ES is for Spanish. And the idea is you can actually have like a location as well. So I can say English inside of the US as opposed to English inside of UK, for example, or Spanish in Mexico or Spanish in Spain. But I'm gonna keep this video pretty simple and I'm going to focus on the language only, not the combination of a language and a location. Because certain countries do things slightly differently even if they speak the same language. But in my case, I'm just gonna use the language for this example. So once I get this language, I just need to return it. And then this function will be used by Flask Babel. Okay, so now that I have the Babel object and the get locale function, I can go over to dundernit.py. I'm going to import Babel here, and then I'm going to call init app on it. So babel.init app, app. But I also want the uh, locale selector, so locale selector, and that's going to be my git uh, locale function that I have here. And uh, looking at this, it uses requests. So let me import requests from Flask. So request there. 
And then I'm going to import this from extensions and it goes here under locale selector. Also, one thing I wanna do is I wanna print the language that gets selected. So I can say selected language and then language here, uh, just so I can see. And we'll be able to see the output of the print once we have the rest of the things for Flask Babel set up. So now that we have Flask Babel instantiated and the locale selector created, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to start by adding some translations. So let's go over to the template. And the idea is all of this English text here. So reservations, create reservation, name, and so on. Anything that's like a label that appears here visually in the app, I want to mark it as something that could be translated. So the way that you mark some text in a template to be translated is by converting this to a different form. So I'm going to use the Jinja double curly brackets for variables, and I'm going to call get text. And I'm going to pass in the same text here as a string, right? So instead of having create reservation by itself, I'm calling get text inside of double curly brackets and create reservation is going to be a string. So this doesn't change how it appears, but it marks it as something that can be translated to a different language. So in the case of English, nothing happens, but in the case of Spanish, it will use the Spanish version of create reservation if it is available. So let me just show you that nothing changes here. Create reservation is still the same. So now let me go back here and just know that get text isn't the only one that you can use. There are some other ones, but the most common thing that you'll see besides get text is just an underscore. So underscore is an alias for get text when it comes to Flask Babel. But for clarity purposes in this video, I'm just going to use get text. But in a real app, you may see underscore and then the parentheses with the string inside. So I'm going to focus on translating just this right now, and then later I'll add more translations. So uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to create a file called babel.cfg. And the reason why I want this file is because I wanna tell Babel where to look for things that can be translated. So I'm gonna copy and paste it here and just explain what's going on. So the idea is I want to ignore anything that has git text inside of my virtual environment. And then for Python files, I wanna look inside of .py files. And then for templates, for Jinja2, I wanna look in the templates directory and I wanna look for things with .html. So just know you may not always need to ignore the virtual environment because there could be some things in there that you need to translate for your app. For me, I just wanna keep it really simple. I wanna ignore what's in there because there are some things that can be translated. And for this video, I just wanna focus on the things that I created. But for your project, you may in fact need stuff from the virtual environment depending on the libraries that you're using for your project. So just keep that in mind. So that's it for the Babel configuration file. So now that I have that, I can go to my command line here and I'll use the pybabel command and then I'll use extract. And first I'm going to pass it a configuration file. So dash capital F and then babel.cfg, the one I just created. And then dash O, and this is for the file that's going to be created, the main file that holds all the keys for the translations. So we're gonna call this messages.pot by convention. And I just wanna put it in the current directory. So I'm gonna run this. And we see it's trying to extract messages from all of my Python files, so .py, and then also my one template. So now if we open this file, messages.pot, we have some information up here, but this is just information about the project. The important part is down here where we see create reservation. So the idea is it has the location of it, index.html, line 15. It has a message ID, create reservation, and then it has a message string. This file doesn't need to be edited. You can just keep it as it is right here. You could give this file to like a translator or you can translate it yourself, but you would make a copy of that and put it somewhere else that I'll show you in just a second. But this actual file here never needs to be changed. This is just for uh, reference purposes. I mean, there are some things that you can change for it, but you don't need to put the translations in it. That's really the main point here. So you can change you know, some of the metadata here and there are some other things that you could potentially change, but the idea is you don't actually put the translations in here, uh, you put them somewhere else. So now that I have that, I now want to create the first translations file. So I'll do pybabel again and then init. So I only need to run this init once and then I'll show you how to run this subsequent times. But for now, um, we're just gonna use init here. 
So I'm going to use the messages.pod file that I just created. So dash I messages.pod and then dash D. This is for the directory that the translations are going to go in. And I'm just going to create a directory called translations. And then dash L is for the language. I want translations for Spanish. So let me go ahead and run that. And we see it creates a directory called translations. Let's open that. We have another directory in here called ES, that's for Spanish, and then LC messages. And then inside of here, we have messages.po. And you may notice that this file is pretty much the same as messages.pot. So this is the file that needs to be updated when it comes to working with the uh, translations. Messages.pot is just like a template, basically. So when you want to add values for Spanish, you put them in the messages.po file. So let's go ahead and add a translation. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a file that has all the text translated because I don't speak Spanish. So I just put everything into Google Translate and here we have create reservation. So this is the Spanish version of it. I'm going to copy this. And then in messages.po, what I wanna do is I wanna find create reservation. It's the only thing here. And inside of the message string, I just wanna paste in the Spanish version of it. So create reservation, the English text will be the key, the ID of it. And then message string here will be the translated text. So I'll do that for everything that I have in here. For now, I just have one thing. And once I have that, I need to compile it. So pybabel compile dash D and then translations. And I spell babel wrong. So pybabel like that. Okay, so compiling catalog translations. And once that happens, uh, we should see a messages.mo file. And I don't see it yet. Let me refresh. Yeah, so messages.mo there. And this is the compiled version of the translations that Flask Babel actually uses when it's determining what to display. So now with that, we can see the translation. So let me start up the app and let me go over and refresh. So we see it's still create reservation right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my browser settings and I'm going to change the language. So right now the language is English. I'm going to set it as Spanish here. And now when I refresh the page, it still has create reservation. So let's investigate why that's happening. So we see here the selected language is Spanish. Um, before it was selected language English. And we see it's still not translating. So this is actually a common problem that people run into and I'm running into it myself. So the problem here is the location of the translations directory. So what I can do here is I can do app config and then I can do Babel translation directories. And then I want to put the location of the uh, directory. So I'll just use an absolute path to keep it simple. So I'm going to copy this, paste that there, and then it's going to be translations, right? So let's try this again. Let's go back and refresh. And now we see that it's appearing. So this is now the Spanish version of the text, but we see everything else is still in English because I haven't added the translations yet. And also I want you to notice that the date format has changed. So before I was uh, using English, so it had uh, an American date format, but now because I'm using Spanish, it has uh, a different way of formatting things. So I just want you to see that because uh, even though it looks different, the date picker will work the same, but uh, we see the browser is already translating the date picker because that is uh, part of the browser, not my app. So with that, let me go over to my file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create get text for everything. I'm going to skip through this part in the video uh, once I'm done. But the idea is I'm just going to have get text for all of these uh, fields that can be translated in the app. Okay, so I've added the rest of the get text calls here, as you can see. Uh, some are complaining because of the double quotes, but the Jinja gets executed before the HTML, so it should be fine. If it's a problem, I'll come back and fix it. Um, but now I have more translations that I just added. Okay, so now that I have get text everywhere, I need to update my messages.pot. So I can do that by calling extract again. So the pybabel extract pi babel extract dash f babel.cfg and dash o messages.pot. Okay, so if we go to messages.pot, uh, we see there are more values in here. 
and all of these things can be translated. And now that I have the messages.pod, I want to update messages.po, but I don't want to overwrite my existing translations. I want to merge in the new values that aren't inside of messages.po already from messages.pod. So what I can do is I can do pybabel update instead. So pybabel update, and I'll do dash i, and then messages.pot, and then the directory, the translations directory, I'll update it. And now if we look at this, we see that uh, I still have create reservation here in the translation, and now I have all the other things in here that need to be translated. So before I go ahead and add all the typical values, I wanna show you one that's fuzzy here. So here, fuzzy. Uh, so what happens here is when Flask Babel detects something that is similar to something that already exists, so reservations, it will try to use the value that came before. But this is not reservations, this is like create reservation. So what you can do is you can just delete the fuzzy thing here and you can uh, edit this as a regular translation. So for reservations, it's this here. I'll go to messages.po. And then this is going to appear for reservations. So now let me take the time to go through and update everything else, just, and then I'll jump to when I'm done. Okay, so I have all the translations in here now. And next, what I need to do is compile the new messages.po. So pybabel compile dash d translations. And now with the new compiled translations, I should be able to see them in the app. So let's go here and refresh. And now we see that everything is in Spanish. So now that the app is translated, the last thing I wanna do is I want to update the dates and I wanna update the currency values. So you may notice here I'm storing the currency, but I'm not displaying it anywhere. I'm gonna use a special function to display the currency. But first, uh, let me update the date. So let's go over to index.html. And all I have to do is I need to find the place where the date shows up. So reservation.date. And then I'll use a ginger filter that's included in a Flask Babel called date format. And I'll just put that after reservation.date. So now when I reload the page, uh, we see that the date completely changes, right? So it's 20 September, uh, 2024. Like as you saw, I didn't use a date format, so this is the default. There are other date formats that you can use and you can just pass them as arguments to that date format filter. But I'll just leave the uh, default here because I think that's fine. So let me do the same thing with the currency. So let's go over to amounts. And what I can do is I can do the filter and then this is going to be currency format. And then I wanna pass the currency from the reservation. So reservation.currency and then I'll refresh, and now we see that this changes. This has a completely different format uh, for the currency and the dollar value. So now let me change this back to English. Uh, let's see, where are settings? I think it's there. And then let's change the language back to English and refresh. So we see it switches back to English. We see that the date has changed. We see that the amount has changed with the dollar sign in front. And then we see that the date picker has changed as well. So this is just the beginning of what you can do with Flask Babel, but this is probably the stuff that you're gonna do the most. Um, there are other ways that you can translate text. Uh, you can translate like more constant values instead of uh, things that appear in templates. You can translate text that's in your Python files instead of just the templates. Uh, there's a lot that you can do. Um, you can even consider like having translations for in-app things like um, things in the database. Uh, this won't be Flask Babel necessarily. This will be uh, like a translations table in your database, uh, but you can even do stuff like that as well. But these are the basics, like I said, so if you understand this video, you'll be able to uh, implement this in your own app, and then when you need to do something more advanced, you'll realize that it's just a slight variation of things that I did in this app. So that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to show you for Flask Babel. If you have any questions about anything that I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.